Akhike Information Criterion, Wikipedia Article Audio The Akhike Information Criterion is an estimator of the relative quality of statistical models for a given set of data. Given a collection of models for the data, AIC estimates the quality of each model, relative to each of the other models. Thus, AIC provides a means for model selection. AIC is founded on information theory, it offers an estimate of the relative information lost when a given model is used to represent the process that generated the data. Definition How to apply AIC in practice AIC does not provide a test of a model in the sense of testing a null hypothesis. It tells nothing about the absolute quality of a model only the quality relative to other models. Thus, if all the candidate models fit poorly, AIC will not give any warning of that. Suppose that we have a statistical model of some data. Let K be the number of estimated parameters in the model. Let, L, be the maximum value of the likelihood function for the model. Then the AIC value of the model is the following. Given a set of candidate models for the data, the preferred model is the one with the minimum AIC value. Thus, AIC rewards goodness of fit, but it also includes a penalty that is an increasing function of the number of estimated parameters. The penalty discourages overfitting because increasing the number of parameters in the model almost always improves the goodness of the fit. AIC is founded in information theory. Suppose that the data is generated by some unknown process F. We consider two candidate models to represent F, G1 and G2. If we knew F, then we could find the information lost from using G1 to represent F by calculating the kullback leibler divergence, DKL. Similarly, the information lost from using G2 to represent F could be found by calculating DKL. We would then choose the candidate model that minimized the information loss. We cannot choose with certainty, because we do not know F. Akhike showed, however, that we can estimate, via AIC, how much more information is lost by G1 than by G2. The estimate, though, is only valid asymptotically, if the number of data points is small, then some correction is often necessary. AICC To apply AIC in practice, we start with a set of candidate models, and then find the model's corresponding AIC values. There will almost always be information lost due to using a candidate model to represent the true model. We wish to select, from among the candidate models, the model that minimizes the information loss. We cannot choose with certainty, but we can minimize the estimated information loss. Suppose that there are R candidate models. Denote the AIC values of those models by AIC1, AIC2, AIC3, AICR. Let AIC min be the minimum of those values. Then the quantity EXP slash 2 can be interpreted as being proportional to the probability that the ITH model minimizes the information loss. History As an example, suppose that there are three candidate models, whose AIC values are 100, 102, and 110. Then the second model is EXP slash 2 equals 0.368 times as probable as the first model to minimize the information loss. Similarly, the third model is EXP slash 2 equals 0.007 times as probable as the first model to minimize the information loss. In this example, 
we would omit the third model from further consideration. We then have three options, gather more data, in the hope that this will allow clearly distinguishing between the first two models, simply conclude that the data is insufficient to support selecting one model from among the first two, take a weighted average of the first two models, with weights proportional to 1 and 0.368, respectively, and then do statistical inference based on the weighted multi-model. The quantity EXP-2 is known as the relative likelihood of model I. It is closely related to the likelihood ratio used in the likelihood ratio test. Indeed, if all the models in the candidate set have the same number of parameters, then using AIC might at first appear to be very similar to using the likelihood ratio test. There are, however, important distinctions. In particular, the likelihood ratio test is valid only for nested models, whereas AIC has no such restriction. Usage tips When the sample size is small, there is a substantial probability that AIC will select models that have too many parameters, i.e. that AIC will overfee. To address such potential overfitting, AICC was developed, AICC is AIC with a correction for small sample sizes. Counting Parameters The formula for AICC depends upon the statistical model. Assuming that the model is univariate, is linear in its parameters, and has normally distributed residuals, then the formula for AICC is as follows. Transforming data Where n denotes the sample size and k denotes the number of parameters. Thus, AICC is essentially AIC with an extra penalty term for the number of parameters. Note that as n, the extra penalty term converges to zero, and thus AICC converges to AIC. If the assumption that the model is univariate and linear with normal residuals does not hold, then the formula for AICC will generally be different from the formula above. For some models, the precise formula can be difficult to determine. For every model that has AICC available, though, the formula for AICC is given by AIC plus terms that includes both K and K2. In comparison, the formula for AIC includes K but not K2. In other words, AIC is a first-order estimate, whereas AICC is a second-order estimate. Software Unreliability Further discussion of the formula, with examples of other assumptions, is given by Burnham and Anderson and by Kanashi and Kitagawa. In particular, with other assumptions, bootstrap estimation of the formula is often feasible. To summarize, AICC has the advantage of tending to be more accurate than AIC but AICC also has the disadvantage of sometimes being much more difficult to compute than AIC. Note that if all the candidate models have the same K and the same formula for AICC, then AICC and AIC will give identical valuations, hence, there will be no disadvantage in using AIC, instead of AICC. Furthermore, if n is many times larger than k2, then the extra penalty term will be negligible, hence, the disadvantage in using AIC, instead of AICC, will be negligible. The Akaik information criterion was formulated by the statistician Hiratagu Akaik, it was originally named an information criterion. It was first announced by Akaik at a 1971 symposium, the proceedings of which were published in 1973. The 1973 publication, though, was only an informal presentation of the concepts. 
The first formal publication was a 1974 paper by Akaik. As of October 2014, the 1974 paper had received more than 14,000 citations in the Web of Science, making it the 73rd most cited research paper of all time. The initial derivation of AIC relied upon some strong assumptions. Takuchi showed that the assumptions could be made much weaker. Takuchi's work, however, was in Japanese and was not widely known outside Japan for many years. AICC was originally proposed for linear regression by Shujiura. That instigated the work of Hervik and Psy, and several further papers by the same authors, which extended the situations in which AICC could be applied. Comparisons with other model selection methods The first general exposition of the information-theoretic approach was the volume by Burnham and Anderson. It includes an English presentation of the work of Takuchi. The volume led to far greater use of AIC, and it now has more than 39,000 citations on Google Scholar. Comparison with BIC Akhike called his approach an entropy maximization principle, because the approach is founded on the concept of entropy in information theory. Indeed, Minimizing AIC in a statistical model is effectively equivalent to maximizing entropy in a thermodynamic system, in other words, the information-theoretic approach in statistics is essentially applying the second law of thermodynamics. As such, AIC has roots in the work of Ludwig Boltzmann on entropy. For more on these issues, see Akhaik and Burnham and Anderson. A statistical model must fit all the data points. Thus, a straight line, on its own, is not a model of the data, unless all the data points lie exactly on the line. We can, however, choose a model that is a straight line plus noise, such a model might be formally described thus, yi equals b0 plus b1 xi plus epsilon i. Here, the epsilon i are the residuals from the straight line fit. If the epsilon i are assumed to be iid Gaussian, then the model has three parameters, b0, b1, and the variance of the Gaussian distributions. Thus, when calculating the AIC value of this model, we should use k equals 3. More generally, for any least squares model with IID. Gaussian residuals, the variance of the residuals distributions should be counted as one of the parameters. As another example, consider a first-order autoregressive model, defined by xi equals c plus phi xi1 plus epsilon i, with the epsilon i being IID. Gaussian. For this model, there are three parameters, c, phi, and the variance of the epsilon i. More generally, a pth order autoregressive model has p plus two parameters. The AIC values of the candidate models must all be computed with the same data set. Sometimes, though, we might want to compare a model of the response variable, y with the model of the logarithm of the response variable, log. More generally, we might want to compare a model of the data with a model of transformed data. Following is an illustration of how to deal with data transforms, investigators should be sure that all hypotheses are modeled using the same response variable. Comparison with cross-validation Comparison with least squares Comparison with Malos's CP Suppose that we want to compare two models, one with a normal distribution of y and one with a normal distribution of log. We should not directly compare the AIC values of the two models. Instead, 
we should transform the normal cumulative distribution function to first take the logarithm of y. To do that, we need to perform the relevant integration by substitution, thus, we need to multiply by the derivative of the logarithm function, which is 1 slash y. Hence, the transformed distribution has the following probability density function. Which is the probability density function for the log normal distribution? We then compare the AIC value of the normal model against the AIC value of the log normal model. Some statistical software will report the value of AIC or the maximum value of the log likelihood function, but the reported values are not always correct. Typically, any incorrectness is due to a constant in the log likelihood function being omitted. For example, the log likelihood function for n independent identical normal distributions is. This is the function that is maximized when obtaining the value of AIC. Some software, however, omits the constant term ln, and so reports erroneous values for the log likelihood maximum and thus for AIC. Such errors do not matter for AIC-based comparisons, if all the models have their residuals as normally distributed, because then the errors cancel out. In general, however, the constant term needs to be included in the log likelihood function. Hence, before using software to calculate AIC, it is generally good practice to run some simple tests on the software, to ensure that the function values are correct. The formula for the Bayesian information criterion is similar to the formula for AIC, but with a different penalty for the number of parameters. With AIC the penalty is 2K, whereas with BIC the penalty is LNK. A comparison of AIC slash AICC and BIC is given by Burnham and Anderson, with follow-up remarks by Burnham and Anderson. The authors show that AIC slash AICC can be derived in the same Bayesian framework as BIC, just by using different prior probabilities. In the Bayesian derivation of BIC, though, each candidate model has a prior probability of 1 slash R, such a derivation is not sensible, because the prior should be a decreasing function of K. Additionally, the authors present a few simulation studies that suggest AICC tends to have practical slash performance advantages over BIC. A point made by several researchers is that AIC and BIC are appropriate for different tasks. In particular, BIC is argued to be appropriate for selecting the true model from the set of candidate models, whereas AIC is not appropriate. To be specific, if the true model is in the set of candidates, then BIC will select the true model with probability 1, as n, in contrast. When selection is done via AIC, the probability can be less than 1. Proponents of AIC argue that this issue is negligible, because the true model is virtually never in the candidate set. Indeed, it is a common aphorism in statistics that all models are wrong, hence the true model cannot be in the candidate set. Notes Another comparison of AIC and BIC is given by Vries. Vries presents a simulation study which allows the true model to be in the candidate set. The simulation study demonstrates, in particular, that AIC sometimes selects a much better model than BIC even when the true model is in the candidate set. The reason is that, for finite n, BIC can have a substantial risk of selecting a very bad model from the candidate set. This reason can arise even when n is much larger than k2. With AIC, the risk of selecting a very bad model is minimized. If the true model is not in the candidate set, then the most that we can hope to do is select the model that best approximates the true model. 
AIC is appropriate for finding the best approximating model, under certain assumptions. Comparison of AIC and BIC in the context of regression is given by Yang. In regression, AIC is asymptotically optimal for selecting the model with the least mean squared error, under the assumption that the true model is not in the candidate set. BIC is not asymptotically optimal under the assumption. Yang additionally shows that the rate at which AIC converges to the optimum is, in a certain sense, the best possible. Leave one out cross validation is asymptotically equivalent to AIC, for ordinary linear regression models. Asymptotic equivalence to AIC also holds for mixed effects models. Sometimes, each candidate model assumes that the residuals are distributed according to independent identical normal distributions. That gives rise to least squares model fitting. With least squares fitting, the maximum likelihood estimate for the variance of a model's residuals distributions is, sigma, 2, equals, rss slash, n, equals backslash mathrm slash n, where, rss, is the residual sum of squares, rss, equals, i, equals, 1, n, y, i, f, x, i, theta, 2, equals backslash sum, happy face, then, the maximum value of a model's log likelihood function is, where c1 is a constant independent of the model, and dependent only on the particular data points, i.e. it does not change if the data does not change. That gives AIC equals 2K plus NLN 2C1 equals 2K plus NLN plus C2. Because only differences in AIC are meaningful, the constant C2 can be ignored, which allows us to conveniently take AIC equals 2K plus NLN for model comparisons. Note that if all the models have the same K, then selecting the model with minimum AIC is equivalent to selecting the model with minimum RSS which is the usual objective of model selection based on least squares. Malo's CP is equivalent to AIC in the case of linear regression.